Oh, g'day champions. We've got a quilted tone block 202 here. The customer tells me that smoke came out of it because it was run with an incorrect load. Uh, so let's crack her open and have a look. Now you would like to think that in this day and age there'd be some kind of protection against uh, incorrect impedances on the on the speaker output, but uh, with solid state stuff, which this is, um, the damage often occurs in a microsecond, like, well not a microsecond, but a very small amount of time before any protection circuitry can have the opportunity to kick in and protect the amp or speaker anyway. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Hopefully there's a big satisfying skid mark in there, but... Oh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I haven't even flipped the thing over yet. Can you see that? Big smoke deposition and a soot on the imp inside of the uh, chassis. So, um, do we just call it here? <laughs> Let's have a look at the carnage. <laughs> All right. So, what do we have here? We've got a proprietary board, which isn't good. If it was an ice power module, I could have probably just purchased a replacement. I'm not sure who even distributes quilter stuff in Australia. I can look into it and see if uh, new board's even an option. But um, if you were to try and repair this thing on a component level, this would be a multi-layer board. When I say multi-layer, I don't mean just the top and bottom. There's probably traces in the center of that board as well. And there could be failures within the circuit board, which for a well-documented high-value item like a MacBook um, may, may be viable if you had the... PCB layouts to um, delve into it with a Dremel, but in the case of a, I don't know what these things go for. So they look like they're around the $1,200 mark new uh, and secondhand around the six to $800 mark. Uh, so yeah, you don't want to be investing too much time into this. 1200 bucks for this, wow. Anyway, so we've got exploded uh, power resistors there. Surface mount, they've gotten so hot that they've... Uh, Melted their solder connections, blasted themselves off the board. Little bits of them everywhere. We've got some serious plasma flameage that's ejected from this, what used to be a Wema cap. So this looks like the output area because you've got your, uh, well, you got your Class D amp and uh, that's the filtering uh, to, to avoid, because, you know, Class D switch at high frequency so that um, filters out the EMI so it doesn't, create a big antenna of transmitting hash to every device nearby um, but if there's a high frequency oscillation um, these capacitors can really cop it which may be what happened here uh, but like the owner said um, he ran it with the wrong impedance but I don't know how wrong like how far off was it a short circuit was it a failed speaker lead for something to go bang um, to this degree it must have been a pretty uh edge case scenario man this is really impressive um you can actually see like molten metals been sprayed across the board from these caps and it looks almost like solder but i think it's actually molten foil from the film caps uh so yeah quite a dramatic failure mode now it does look as if there used to be a resistor here as well but it's melted itself off the off its solder connections and blasted itself into the stratosphere. So I guess now it's changed from uh, let's see if we can repair this thing to let's see how good their support is, their customer support, and if we can get replacement parts, if their distributors are responsive, if they're responsive. Because uh, with in the day and age of disposable goods like this, um, what really matters is the customer support. And if that's non-existent, well, then your company's a non-starter and I can't recommend any of their products. But let's not judge them too early. Let's send off some emails, which takes time. Uh, and wait wait to hear back. It's Sunday afternoon here, so we won't hear back probably for several days anyway. But once we hear back or don't hear back, we'll carry on. So now we played the waiting game. Uh, wait to hear back. I sent off emails to five dealers in Australia. Uh, I couldn't find the official distributor so i think that what often is the case with some more obscure brands is one of the retailers is the distributor that brings up a whole bunch of conflicts of interest in terms of pricing and trade deals and whatever but anyway moving on um i've also sent an email directly to quilter themselves well started a support ticket so uh we'll wait to hear back 
um, and hopefully the silence isn't deafening and hopefully we don't have to use this thing as a doorstop. It is quite a cute little chassis there. I wonder if the uh, entire preamp is on the front board and we could just drop a nice power board in there. It could be another option. I'd have to see what's actually on the main board and what's on the front board. Usually the whole preamp is um, contained on the front PCB, as is the case with like a lot of the Mark Base and DV Mark stuff. And the uh, main board is for the power supply and the output stage only. So you can sometimes um, drill some new support holes to suit another brand's board because the uh, main supply and everything's on the one. So that could be another option if we if we get crickets from Quilter and there are subsidiaries.